So, I don't know if you've been watching my channel lately, but I've been doing a lot of inky stuff with fountain pens, and I have not been doing a lot of videos on inking with fountain pens, at least not a lot of videos that have actually been released to the public. I've got a few in my backlog, but you know, that could take forever to get to. So I am going to prioritize this, and we're going to work together on inking this cute little illustration of Kara from my comic, 7-inch Kara, which you guys can read for freezies at 7inchkara.com. Or if you just can't wait and you don't like a cliffhanger, you can order a print copy at natusoop.com slash Kara hyphen comic. But we're going to be inking this cute little drawing of Kara, which was done on watercolor paper, believe it or not. However, it's a specific type. It's the Hokusai uh, watercolor paper made by Maruman. So it is more like a heavy cardstock that has been embossed with a watercolor texture that you can watercolor on top of. In fact, I have done so successfully numerous times doesn't quite take watercolor as well as some of the nicer papers, but the, you get to use your fountain pen, so that's cool. It is a cellulose-based watercolor paper. That means it's made from wood pulp, not cotton rag. So again, not top of the line, not the highest. Um, and it doesn't have so much of a texture that your pen's going to skip. And we're going to ink with... Um, a noodler's creeper you can this is a flexible fountain pen there aren't a whole lot of them and it's one of three that are available for under 20 bucks you can get or yeah well under or around you can also get a noodler's ahab and a noodler's conrad both of which are slightly bigger um, but I'm going to use my flex I, I love them all I have all three um, but I'm gonna use my flex because it's inked up and it's inked up with a waterproof ink it is inked up with detrimentous document blue you can also use um, pigment-based waterproof inks. In fact, I recommend you check out more videos on this channel because I've been doing a lot of field tests to determine whether or not certain inks are truly waterproof. And these are fountain pen friendly inks. I know some of you guys in the comments are all ready to like tape, t type up a scathing remark. Please hold off. Um, I've been doing my research, been doing my work, don't worry. So we're going to ink this cutie today, and I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I hope you got your paper, your pencils, and your fountain pens ready. Okay, so I have here on my drafting table, so far two, there we go, three flex type nibs. These are the three pens that Noodlers makes. Well, they make a fourth, they make a Charlie, but that doesn't have a flex nib. This is the Conrad. It's a piston filler. And it runs from 20 to 25, depending on where you're getting it. This is the Ahab. I think I paid 23 for mine at Paper and Ink Arts. It and the Conrad have the same size nib, the same type of feed, but different filler systems. I like both of them. This is the Flex. It was the first, I think. Um, it's also referred to as the Creeper. C-R-E-A-P-E-R, not C-R-E-E-P-E-R. But it's also um, referred to as the Noodler's Flex. It's much smaller than the other two pens, so you can get a finer line out of it. You can get a fine line out of all three. If you try to push the Flex to get the sort of line you can get out of the Conrad and the Ahab, it's just not going to happen. Uh, it's going to do something called railroading. That's when the ink can't keep up with the Flex in the feed, and so you'll get two lines or no lines at all. So to demonstrate, and this is just inexpensive sketchbook paper. It's like a Strathmore sample, fine lines, thick lines, find it thick. You do need to apply some pressure and it's going to be more pressure than if you were using a dip pen. Let's see if I can get it to railroad. See, that's what I mean by railroading. Conrad has another waterproof ink in it. It is Deatramentus Document Yellow, and I did a field test for that. You can check that out here on the channel. I apologize if the yellow is a little difficult to see, but I wasn't going to dump my pen. You can get a much wider line without the railroading. Still fairly fine to thick. 
and I don't know if I'm comfortable pushing this to the point when it would railroad. So you can get some pretty wide lines with that. And then the Ahab has a different type of filler. It has a pump piston. And I talk about this in I think my paper and ink arts haul video because that's where I got it from. And this is with um, platinum pigment ink in blue. And I did review this as well in the same video as I, actually all three of these inks are reviewed in the same video, talked about and demonstrated in the same video. So like, there we go, there's some railroading. But that's because I'm doing many thick lines in rapid succession. Um, and there are other flex fountain pens. You can modify a Jin Hao fountain pen. Um, I've done that on this channel as well if you're interested. Um, it's not, it's a little more finicky to ink with. It has some special requirements that can be frustrating. Um, the Platinum Cool, which is a $30 pen, has some flex to it. And I'll show you guys that in more detail if you're interested. Um, and then there's expensive or fairly expensive pens, which uh, do have flex, as well as vintage fountain pens, which I try to avoid because they're not um, commonplace and I don't really want to deal with a possibly finicky pen. There's also the Ackerman pump pens. I've talked about them a little bit on this channel and there's going to be more videos on that topic to come as well. Those are not truly fountain pens excuse me, they have like a pump on them that you can use to push out more ink. And those have some interesting quirks that I think I talk about in that video. But there are some flex pins available on the market. My favorite are the noodlers for me. Other people, you know, it's a sort of your mileage may vary. Other people, particularly fountain pen people, have had a lot of bad experiences. Um, I clean every single pen I get, even the cheap ones, thoroughly before I use them. And, um... I've just been kind of lucky, I guess. So we're gonna move on into the inking portion of this video. All right, so with these flex fountain pens, they often have a screw on cap. So it's not quite as simple as pull on and pull off. And as when I'm inking almost anything, I like to start with the objects furthest in the foreground and then work my way back. The exception is sometimes uh, when inking faces, since faces you tend to notice the most if you mess up on those, and your viewer will too. Um, sometimes I do those first when my hand is the most fresh. So you're not going to get a super duper fine line. If you're looking for a 1 or a 2, a point one, point two, you're just not really going to get that with this. You might get it with one of the Jin Hao modifications, um, but with a standard Noodler's Flex, you're not going to get that, which is fine with me. Oh, and I got a little bit of link leaking, which is unusual because this pen does not leak like ever. So something that can cause that leaking is if you've got warm hands, your the heat of your hand will warm up the liquid inside causing it to expand if you're holding it up like this the air can escape from the top but if you're holding it down it will drip out so you can just hold it up like this to allow that excess air to expand but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to step away but I'm also going to use my camera cut off right there and I didn't realize it what I did is I soaked up the extra ink very carefully using a paper towel when you get uh, sometimes when you have inked something and you get smearing with things like watercolor or alcohol markers it's because there's an excess buildup of ink and it didn't have time to fully cure or bond to the paper surface which is what tends to be the problem when you're having uh, issues with some of the, the waterproof uh, fountain pen inks that aren't truly waterproof it's just not right for that paper surface so and I know watercolor paper is one of those papers that can be very tricky to use in that regard. 
So um, that's why I do take the time to do all the testing that I do and to talk um, sometimes even too much about it. So I'm going to move on to the face. And I'm going to bear down with a little bit of pressure on the underside of the bangs and lighten up on the tops. And the reason I'm doing that is it gives the implication or the indication that light has hit the surface. Another technique I've discovered with fountain pens is lightening up and then doing the dots really pushes the look that light's hitting it, at least in my art, and I think it's a cute addition, so. But basically, unless your light source is coming from underneath, bearing down when you get to the bottoms of things tends to give an in indication of sort of depth and weight. And you are, of course, allowed, if not even encouraged, to rotate your paper to try and find the best angle. Now for those of you who are used to inking with say tech pen inks or even food aid pens, uh, fountain pen inks do have a longer dry time. So you may find yourself stopping and picking it up, you know, pretty, pretty frequently in order to give your inks a chance to dry without smearing. That's just the nature of the beast. It's kind of unfair to expect all of our materials to behave the same way. Otherwise, why would we even have different materials? I have found that fountain pen inks, um, especially even those uh, sort of rated well for um, illustration and art, say plat platinum carbon black, on the wrong paper, they can bleed out and feather and cause a terrible mess. Um, if you go back and watch the first video in my How to Meet a Martian where I'm inking, you'll notice that I tried to ink it with fountain pens because that was something I'd, I'd never inked a comic page with fountain pens. I wanted to see how that would work. And the paper I was using was absolutely not ideal for that and I had a lot of problems with bleeding and feathering. If you want to completely eliminate uh, the possibility of your paper being the problem. You can work on papers that are more designed for fountain pens like Rhodia, Claire, uh, Claire Fontaine, or Tomio River paper. Uh, I, I don't like being limited to those kind of papers, so I just test beforehand to figure out what works. And I try to share that with you guys so that, um, you know, we can all benefit from each other's knowledge and grow together. That's important to me. And this document ink is actually being a little bit um, blobby today. I think my hand is too hot and uh, the room I'm working in is probably a little too warm for it. So I'm trying to be very delicate. Usually I can get lighter lines than I'm getting today. Good thing, I guess, then that I went with the flex and not with the Ahab or the Conrad because if it's my hand being a little warm causing the issue, the larger nibs would be even worse. So I'm going to give this a chance to dry and I'm going to step away and let my pen sort of cool down. All right, so I've given this plenty of time to dry. Oh, 
getting blobbies again. Let's see if we can't fix that. So I'm going to dab up very carefully because if you're not careful, it'll go everywhere. The excess paint. I think the problem comes from the nib not necessarily being properly set. So I'm going to use a paper towel to pull it out and adjust it. So this time we have more nib than feed showing. Go ahead. Test that. That's writing a lot drier. So that's one of the nice things about these noodlers pens is that you can adjust the flow a bit by adjusting where the nib is in the feed. And you don't really want to leave ink on your hand. You want to go wipe that off. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I still have ink on my hands, if I don't get rid of it, it's going to go all over my drawing. It's the reason why I'm really persnickety about having dirty hands. is because it always ruins everything I do. And I recommend if you're resuming an inked piece that you've put down for a while, like um, I'd actually taken a few hours in between inking her face and uh, coming back to you guys. So if a significant time has passed, or I don't know, even if you've taken a break or maybe your blood pressure has changed or you ate something, I recommend starting on a less important part of the illustration. That's why I did these and you saw how it blobbed like that. I'm glad it didn't blob on her face or in her hair. I guess that meant my nib and feed needed an adjustment. Which is great because it actually means I can show you guys. Oh, it did it again. What the heck? Anyway, um, that blobbing is not characteristic of this pen, and that blobbing is not characteristic of um, this paper, and it's not something that normally happens when I'm inking either. So I would really love to troubleshoot that. Absorb that. It could be the ink, though. And the problem with the blobbing is you can't really get to pick when it's going to happen. So if you're inking something important or delicate and it starts blobbing, you're kind of taking a risk. And see how it blobbed out. Let me see if I can sort of make that work. And I wit, I mean, part of it's good because it shows me Shows, allows me to show you guys how to fix that issue. Part of it is bad because I'm trying to talk you guys into using fountain pens for your art. And I'm getting a problem that isn't actually all that characteristic of my experience with using fountain pens for art. And of course I can say, oh, this never happens. But I mean, you know... Who really believes that? But as those of you who frequently watch YouTube videos, especially art YouTube videos, probably know, if something bad is going to happen, it's going to happen on camera. starting to get blobby again. Why are you doing this? It is storming outside and I'm kind of wondering if the barometric pressure is just uh, not really working magic for my pen. I 
So it just means that I have to go a little slower, work a little more carefully. Take more breaks. Breaks are good, right? Everybody likes breaks. So we've got the majority of her body inked. And you guys can see I move my little watercolor notebook around a lot. Just trying to always get the best angles and to keep my hand out of the ink that I've just put down. If you're like me and you find these spirals to be the absolute worst, you can go ahead and remove your drawing from your notebook if you want, if you're using a similar notebook. Nobody said it always has to live in the sketchbook. I know it does keep it organized and handy, but those spirals really are frustrating. And if you're interested, in water resistant and waterproof inks. I have a fair number of reviews on this channel or demonstrations, but I can say that if you're using fountain pens, you do want to stick with a fountain pen ink. Other types of ink, acrylic, uh, India, Sumi, will ruin your fountain pen. I do believe you can use some of those inks in the Ackerman pump action pens, but you are going to want to clean them out immediately. There are plenty of waterproof and water resistant fountain pen inks on the market. I happen to prefer pigment based inks over the others just because there's a wider range. You have more, more um, choice in your colors and your brands. Sailor makes the Sailor Storia and Sailor Nano inks and the Storia inks are the inks I have the most experience, experience with and those are the ones you can find the most reviews for on this channel. Um, platinum also makes pigment based inks. They make pl platinum. So unfortunately, I got cut off when I was talking about platinum inks, but platinum also makes um, three to my knowledge and probably more. I just probably haven't gotten hold of them, but three pigment inks, the platinum carbon black, the platinum pigment blue and the platinum pigment rose wet red rose wed. <laughs> they also make um, iron gall inks that I have not gotten a chance to get my hands on yet. I've been playing around a little bit with uh, iron gall inks which are interesting and have interesting properties and um, you can check those out on this channel as well but I've only gotten a chance to play with the rower and clinger inks and not any of the others. Um, there are a few other companies that do create, or a few other ink creators, I don't even know if you can necessarily call some of them companies because they're teeny tiny, um, and it's just more like one person manufacturing the majority of it, which is awesome, I'm not slighting it in the least, I just mean, I don't mean to give the impression that it's a large group of people producing these. Um, there are other companies that make iron gall inks, they're just a little harder for me. To get a hold of and I know there are some other supposedly waterproof inks. Um, I saw the set on Match Drop. I was actually um, notified when it dropped but I was broke at the time so I couldn't afford to order multiple uh, large size bottles of ink that I might not even like. However, you know, there's places like Goulet Pens and Anderson Pens that do um, samples and that's great because I can try the inks out and decide if they suit my needs without having to go ahead and invest myself. And that makes reviewing so much easier because instead of buying a 
$8 bottle of ink I might use three times, I'm buying an ink sample. I really wish art supplies did that more often. It would be really great if they sent reviewers who are too small for them to bother sending a full-size product. It would be great if they could send a test product or just a couple instead of a full set. Unfortunately, that's not really... I mean, you can write to them. And, uh, you know, I've, I've tried writing to a few companies and I've had mixed results. But I do wish samples were a bit more commonplace. Maybe we could kind of dispel the myth that watercolors are just prohibitively expensive. If people got it... Oh, I got some ink on my hand and it transferred. If people got a chance to use them... And they could see how long they really last. So I'm just finishing the macro. That's the larger items, the macro inks. Up. If you guys are interested in my inking process, you can check out my advanced inking techniques. And the art snacks uh inktober collection playlist i demonstrate a lot of inking supplies so if this is interesting to you but you're not really oh look at all that um but you're not really sure that fountain pens are the way you want to go about inking those playlists should help you out so i'm going to use no pressure i'm just gliding the pen on the paper because a fountain pen works through capillary action and it's going to draw the ink. And I'm just going to fill this in with flowers. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, so I have finished inking this and um, I'm going to allow it to dry overnight before I erase the pencils, but I have used this ink, in fact, this ink in this pen on another illustration recently, and I didn't have any problems at all with the ink coming up, and it is water fast because I'm watercoloring over its twin piece right now. So if you are looking for a good pen and ink combo to get into using fountain pens with your watercolor or your illustration art. I really recommend the Noodlers family of flexible nibs, the Noodlers Flex, Noodlers Conrad, Noodlers Ahab, and um, this is the Deatramentus document ink in dark blue, but um, Deatramentus makes other colors. This is the Deatramentus document ink in yellow. And there are also pigment inks made by Sailor under their Storia line. There's also the Sailor Nano inks, which use micro uh, pigments. And there are pigment inks made by Platinum under their Platinum pigment line that are well worth checking out. If you're interested, I highly recommend you also check out my fountain pens um, section, my fountain pens playlist here on the channel. That's where I'm going to be posting new compatibility tests. So if you're curious if a certain ink is water safe, you can either leave me a comment or you can check out that list and see if I reviewed it yet. If you're interested in sending me links to test in this capacity, just uh, shoot me a comment and we'll work something out. I am always interested in collaborating and uh, getting to play with new art toys, so that could definitely be an option. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope I've maybe opened your mind or turned you on to inking your art with fountain pens. I really enjoy it, but perhaps that is me finding a way to make my hobby sort of uh, involved with my passion. If you guys like my art, if you like what you see, if you think this character is cute, then please head on over to 7, number 7, <laughs> inch inch kara k-a-r-a seven inch kara.com or seven inch kara.tumblr.com to read the webcomic completely free of charge i would really appreciate it in fact if you guys headed on over there and just took a look even if you're not into comics if you just like my art it would really mean a lot to me if you come on camera quit shaking 
if you would do that. If you're interested in more watercolor tutorials, you can check out my watercolor playlist, you can check out my tutorials playlist, or you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P, um, for my watercolor basic series where I teach you guys step-by-step -step in painstaking detail how to watercolor like I do. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye!